Hello everybody and welcome to another video on the Pole Position YouTube channel. In this video we're going to be looking at a uh, feature article on the Formula 1 website that's looking at the main rivalries or what they think will be the main rivalries uh, for F1 in 2021 and I'm going to go through them and just see what my thoughts are. They've obviously done them 1 to 6, I don't know if that's 1 to 6 in terms of the main and what they think will be the highest one. I'm going to go through them and just see what my thoughts are on them. Um, yeah. So really, without further ado, let's get into it. So yeah, they've done a, a feature article on the website. Um, I think there's one to six in terms of uh, what they think are going to be strong rivalries for this season. Actually, one to seven. Oh, fantastic. It gives me an extra one to look through. Um, and I'm just going to go through, you know, in terms of they're going to highlight drama, um, winners, um, big driver moves, podium finishes, and just see what they think the, the main, um, main rivalries really for this season will be. Uh, at number one is Verstappen versus Hamilton. Hamilton. Now, obviously, we know that this is is going to be the main rivalry, really. To be honest, I think as much as I am a, a Bottas fan, I obviously, still believe that he has the potential to uh, win that drivers' championship. Uh, I think, like, obviously, the spotlight is obviously on Hamilton as as the main driver at Mercedes and Max Verstappen as the main driver at Red Bull. Now, obviously, that can change in terms of Red Bull this season because Sergio Perez is coming into the team, and like I said, I think that could cause a uh, interesting dynamic between the two. It might be a bit touchy between during the season, um, but that's you know what we've wanted at the Red Bull team for, for, for seasons now since Daniel Ricciardo left. So I think that's only going to be a good thing for the team and the sport. Um, but they've obviously said you know Verstappen and Hamilton is going to be one of the main rivalries for this season, and hopefully that's very much the case. I think Red Bull hopefully can produce a uh, race winning car for this year that can compare against Mercedes. Um, and, and yeah, can really challenge them. And I think that the main thing is obviously a point I've used before in, in the, the Perez video I did a few weeks ago is the fact that Perez joining the team will hopefully allow Red Bull to be better in the pit stop strategies as well, you know, because obviously Perez and Verstappen will hopefully be quite close to each other as well as Bottas and Hamilton. So hopefully it will allow them to split the strategies and, and, you know, allow Red Bull maybe to have a better hand in terms of, you know, overtaking Mercedes in the pit stops. Um, I mean, obviously with Albon we've had last season when Verstappen happen would be in second place I want to be down in eighth trying to work his way back up the grid and, and that's no help to uh, the Red Bull team at that point so hopefully Perez will uh, allow that to be uh, the case and both of them will be running close together and, and it will cause you know a bit more discomfort maybe for Mercedes when they're looking at their pit stops um, so obviously that's going to be a focus as well hopefully um, obviously we've been waiting for a Verstappen Hamilton rivalry for the past few seasons and we get the odd race but it's usually a DRS overtake because one of their tyres is is not good and and then that's it really so we don't really get much of a fight so hopefully this year if Red Bull bring a more stronger car that can you know, balance Red Bull uh, that can balance Mercedes throughout the season we might get more of a battle on the track and a bit more of a rivalry this year and um, fingers crossed with that but obviously like I said that's what their main rivalry is for this season um, and I don't really disagree with them I think Verstappen and Hamilton and Red Bull and Mercedes is probably going to be one of the main um, rivalries for this season and I'm really looking forward to that. That. Number two, they've gone with Valtteri Bottas and George Russell. Um, interesting because obviously George Russell, I don't think, will be challenging him in any of the races because Mercedes and Williams, I still think, will be a huge gap between the two of them. Um, but I think they're going off the fact that obviously if Bottas has a couple of poor races at the start of the season, there'll be a few more calls to maybe get George Russell in halfway through the year. Um, I don't think that would happen. I don't think Mercedes would be as as rash as that. I, I really don't. I think as much as maybe they would announce halfway through the season that maybe Bottas would leave the team or Russell would join on, in 2022, I don't think they'd make a decision during the season to get rid of one of their drivers. I, I, just, I just don't think Mercedes are like that, as maybe clinical as, as Red Bull would be. I don't think Mercedes would do that. So... Obviously, it was a huge gap between Bottas and Hamilton in the points last year. Um, a, full, uh, you know, a full 124 points short um, was the finished driver in the end. That's almost five race wins. So, it, yeah, it was a little bit bad for Bottas at the end of the year. Obviously, I've said many times, you know, he is probably one of the most unlucky drivers on the grid. But obviously, when you're having a good spell, you have to take chances. And sometimes Bottas doesn't do that. And Hamilton's always seems to be in the uh, right place at the right time. Uh, and, and ultimately, I think in that um, race weekend when Hamilton wasn't there and, and Bottas and Russell were the, the drivers of Mercedes, Bottas really had to show himself to be the number one 
between the two of them, and he didn't really do that either. Obviously, Mercedes had that issue with the pit stops, which cost both drivers, but even during the race, you know, he wasn't showing himself as the top dog between the two. Um, and I think obviously Russell got that fantastic overtake on him as well. I know they were on, I think they were on two different tyres at the time. Bottas was still on his really old um, hard tyres, and Russell had picked it again for mediums. So I think. You know, it, it, you know, they weren't on the same tyres, so you can't really say that, but it was a great overtake when Russell needed to make that overtake on his teammate. So there obviously will be talks throughout the year if Bottas says has a poor start and, and you know Russell is getting absolutely everything out of that Williams. Um, so I suppose the rivalry there, I don't think it will be as high on the list as maybe they're saying, but um, yeah, very much will be a sort of talking point at, during the end of, of this season and the beginning of 2022, because I feel like, you know, it's almost George Russell's time to step up to, to the big team. At number three is Verstappen versus Perez. Now, obviously, I've already done a video on this. Um, I think it's going to be one of the main um, rivalries of this season, um, you know, signing somebody as... I don't know, as as maybe as important as Sergio Perez for the Red Bull brand to make that step out of bringing somebody from the academy in um, and bringing a top quality driver to, to race alongside Verstappen for this year is a big move by Red Bull. And I think it probably will pay off because, you know, we know how good Sergio Perez is. He's obviously a race winner now. He's got multiple podiums. He's fantastic on tyre management. And he just seems to be able to get the best out of his car. So to give him another chance in a top team, I think is is only going to help the sport, the fans, and you know uh, Red Bull themselves. Um, like I said, I think it might get tasty because obviously we've seen Perez have a few um, tangles with his teammates in the past, you know, like Esteban Ocon, um, and obviously you know Ricardo, Daniel Ricardo had a bit of um, sort of moment with his teammate Verstappen when they were drivers. Obviously we know they're good friends off the track, but during the racing they had a, a bit of rivalry as well. So both drivers at Red Bull this season have had um, sort of scuffles with their teammates in the past I think that may be something of what could happen this season at Red Bull but sometimes if you don't overstep the mark like maybe Rosberg and Hamilton did at Mercedes I think it can only help the team because obviously rivalries make sure each side of the garage want to be the best and that obviously only helps the team if, if everyone wants to be um, the, the sort of the top dogs in the in the team so I think you know the, the Verstappen Perez um, relationship is only really going to help Red Bull um, so I think yeah it's going to be an important um, rivalry this season and um, yeah I'd probably put that at second really um, you know behind Verstappen maybe and, and Hamilton. Uh, the next one is is um, Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz now obviously I know why they've done that because Sainz is you know joining the, the Ferrari team for the first time obviously this year he is a new driver with the, the team. Charles Leclerc has been seen as maybe this uh, maybe team leader because obviously Sebastian Vettel struggled last year and, and obviously knowing he was already leaving probably wasn't at his best um, so obviously Charles Leclerc took the um, sort of mantle of being the team leader at Ferrari. Um, Carlos Sainz obviously is an old, uh, is is older, but still you know relatively young, um, and almost coming into his prime. So I think you know that will be quite a good rivalry, but I think it won't be as high on the list as any others, simply because I don't think Ferrari are going to be up there fighting for race wins obviously I think they may get a couple of podiums this season uh, but only if other cars have retirements or issues or anything like that I don't think they'll be constantly fighting for them podium places and I think it will be you know a decent rivalry between the two um, drivers obviously a fresh partnership as well um, and I think you know obviously the, whoever it is will you know it will want to be the sort of team leader going into 2022 with the regulation changes as well so I think it will be a good rivalry between the two drivers to see who comes out on top uh, personally I think if you're going to put both drivers against each other I think Carlos Sainz might nick it I really do I think he's very much an underrated driver in the sport obviously we know Charles Leclerc can be fantastic on his day but you know still has the odd error whereas I think Sainz is more consistent um, and I think yeah overall I think if the pair went against each other I think Sainz would come out of top but let me know in the, the comment section below what your thoughts are on that uh, but yeah, this uh, will be an interesting rivalry, but probably wouldn't put it high on the list. Next one is uh, Fernando Alonso and Esteban Ocon. Uh, now, obviously, we know Fernando Alonso is coming back into the sport this year. Uh, and obviously, the, ch the name is being changed for the team as well. It's not Renault this year, it's Alpine. Um, a two-time Formula 1 world champion in Fernando Alonso is back at the team for a third term. Uh, and obviously, you know, keen to make his uh, mark on the sport again. Um, and hopefully being more of a race 
well, podium winning guy. Okay, I don't again. I don't think it'd be a race winning one, depending on you know, like I said, if any issues happen with Mercedes or Red Bull. Um, but I think, yeah, I think very much it's a podium team, a bit like the, what they did last year. Both Ocon and Daniel Ricciardo got podiums last year, so I think it's very much you know Alonso to try and get that next step up, step up to 2022 onwards. But I think in terms of the rivalry. Um, I personally think if if Alonso is still on top form, which I think we know he can do, it probably will be a bit of a whitewash, um, and I think he will sort of trance all over Esteban Ocon, which probably isn't good for Alonso to come straight back in and, and beat Esteban Ocon. But I think you know Alonso on his day is probably one of the best drivers still on the Formula One grid. So I think very much it might be a walkover between him and Ocon. I think Ocon could still give him a good run for his money, uh, but I don't think it'll be as consistent as maybe another driver would. Um, and you've got to see how, you know, if it if it doesn't work out for Esteban Ocon, that's going to hurt him as a young driver um, and obviously still being part of the Mercedes Academy. If, if he fails against Alonso, it, very much George Russell will be the main contender to maybe replace Bottas. It wouldn't be Ocon. Um, so I think, you know, Ocon has a lot to prove this season, but I think against a former world champion in Fernando Alonso, it's going to be very difficult. So I can understand why they've put the rivalry there, but for me, I think Fernando Alonso will probably edge it. Well, not even edge it, he'll probably walk all over Esteban Ocon this season. And one of the rivalries, I'll, I'll um, do this one, this one's seventh, so I'm going to miss six for the moment because I think six is actually one of the top rivalries. Um, Seventh on the list is Mick Schumacher versus Nikita Mazepin. And obviously, both drivers have shown their credentials in Formula 2. Uh, and obviously, Mick Schumacher won the, the championship last year. Um, Mazepin took two wins, um, and he finished fifth in the standings. Uh, I think, personally for me, Mick Schumacher will probably come out on top on this. But obviously, we know that there's controversy, controversy in terms of um, Mazepin's sort of time in the sport. Um, you know, we know people aren't happy in terms of what happened on social media. Um, I think it was around nine days after announcing that the, the driver would join the team. There was obviously controversy and there's still hashtags and, and things going around on social media still. Every time Haas posts a um, thing on social media, the, the, it starts to get trending again. So I think there's going to be issues with that. And I think Haas may have to address it, you know, maybe before the season. They've obviously... Um, well, they've not supported him, but they've obviously said that they're going to stick with him for, for this season. But I think it's going to be very difficult for the team because there's going to be constant questions over that. So um, whether he still is there at the start of the season, I expect Haspel probably will do. But I think if another driver comes along, possibly, and, and you know Mazepin isn't really on top form, then you know they may look at maybe changing it around halfway through the year. But I think very much they'll probably still keep that. So, But I wouldn't say it's very much a rivalry because I think Mick Schumacher probably will edge it over the two. Uh, and then the main one for me, I think, it's obviously six on this list, but I think um, this is probably going to be one of the most important rivalries. And it, no, it's not between drivers. It is um, Alpine versus Aston Martin versus McLaren versus Ferrari. Now, I've said in the past few videos, actually, um, that I think this is going to be one of the main rivalries of the season because we don't know where each of these teams are really in terms of their performance for this year. Obviously, we know McLaren finished P3 in the Constructors last year. They've got Daniel Ricciardo as a driver this year. They've got a Mercedes engine for this year. So I think ultimately they, they should be the best out of all of them. But let's not obviously discredit the fact that Alpine um, obviously have a rebrand. They've got Fernando Alonso back as well. That Renault engine's been getting better and better over the last few years. So they, again, should be quite strong. Like I said pre um, previously with, with Ocon, they got podiums last year. So it is a possibility, again, for them. Um, Aston Martin, we know Racing Point were really good last year. Stroll was actually impressing me at the end of the year. He was actually getting better as a racing driver. Um, and as much as a lot of people are saying, doubt, doubting Sebastian Vettel coming in, I think he will be important for the team to push on to be more of a top team in the sport. Um, so I think he's only going to help them. And obviously, I think he's going to help Stroll develop as a better driver as well. So I think they're going to be quite strong. And obviously, we've mentioned Ferrari as well. Um, I think it's going to be one of the, the, the biggest rivalries of the season. Obviously, like I said, you want to make sure that you're the highest in terms of the constructors, not just for the pit stops for next season, where you are in terms of the pit lane, but obviously in terms of the amount of money you get at the end of the year as well to help with that regulation change of 2022. I think it's one of the most important ones, really, because you know you want to have the, the most money possible for when you go into this new regulation change. Um, personally, for me, I think it will probably be McLaren, um, Aston Martin, then 
Alpine, then Ferrari, but I might do a uh, specific video on this um, going forward. I might go through maybe the whole teams and where I think they'll finish, but I think in terms of that order, it probably would be McLaren, Aston Martin, Alpine, and then Ferrari, um, but I think it will be one of the most important rivalries of this season, but yeah, that's that's it for the video. Um, thank you very much for watching. Let me know um, your thoughts on any of the rivalries, what you think is going to be the most important, and yeah, let me know in the comments, actually, who do you think is going to be in that order in terms of the teams is it going to be mclaren on top then aston martin then alpine and ferrari like i think it's going to be or what do you think your order will be um like like i said thank you very much for watching this video and um, please subscribe to the youtube channel um it really does uh, you know mean a lot and i will see you all in the next video thank you very much see you soon